I'm an endodontist by trade. We have been using um, 3D printing in our practice for the last two and a half years. Um, essentially, what happens with us is, in many cases that we have um, root canal treatment. Any dentist in the audience? Anybody? Any dentist? Nobody, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in this audience, at least a few people have had some root canal treatment. Anybody show of hands? Yes. Quite a few, actually. Uh, you found that the procedure was long, and it took quite some time for the uh, process to finish, right? If, what would you feel if uh, your endodontist or the, or the surgeon or the dentist comes and tells you he can do the procedure um, for you, by actually having practiced the procedure already before you came, what would you feel? Would you feel better that, that the surgeon has actually done it once already and then you are coming and the accuracy of the procedure goes up, okay? 3D printing has come a long way. Uh, we have 3D printers in our schools. Uh, children are creating new and new um, models and uh, different art, even 3D printed art is there. So uh, medical science and 3D printing has been going on for the last decade. You have a 3D printed jaws, titanium jaws, the first fully 3D printed titanium jaw after a cancer treatment has been done in a combination of Belgium, Netherlands and uh, Sweden. And that was done just about six years ago, okay? Fully titanium 3D printed. So what we do here is um, we need a way to transfer our uh, patient's jaw into a 3D printer. The x-ray that we use has to be accurate enough to actually reproduce the details of the patient and the 3D printer can identify what the x-ray shows. This is a paper in print. Uh, what we use is a cone beam uh, computer tomography, which means it's a cone beam CT. Uh, the normal x-rays are all two-dimensional. That means you got the width and the height but no depth. So the cone beams will have three dimensions. That means it has got 3D um, width, height, and depth, okay? So what it allows me to do is I can see the jaw or the tooth in three dimensions. For example, you have a root which is curved like this. If you take a normal X-ray, you might look like this, it might look straight. But if you look like that, you will know how much curve it is. So if your dentist doesn't know it is curved and he puts a surgical instrument through there, it could come out this way and has problems if you go out of the tooth, okay? So three dimensions means you can see the whole thing. This is a study where a, a professional radiologist compared the features that you can see on a cone beam compared to a normal X-ray. As you look at it, the radiologist found 87% of anomalies compared to the root canal postgraduate students. That's 50%. So that is a huge difference between the anomalies. So the information produced by the cone beam is very, very high. This, just basic guidelines, because if you're going to take a cone beam, we have to be safe, we have to justify the exposure, we have to make sure that the patient benefits from the exposure. We cannot just willy-nilly take a cone beam just for the sake of taking it. We have to justify it, we have to report it, and there has to be a change in outcome. Radiation protection, so to scan or not to scan. So if I am going to take a scan of a patient, I have to be sure that I can do something better than the normal X-ray picture that we get. Otherwise, it's not justified. What this means is we have to keep the dosage of the scan as low as possible, as clear as possible, and to get the maximum amount of information from that one shot, okay? Now, why do we do cone beam? As you can see, this picture on the left top um, is the slicing this way, so you can actually see from the side. A normal x-ray, when you look at it from the front, you don't see the amount of damage that is there. So this is why a cone beam means it's three-dimensional. It's multi-planar. That's the detail you can see how much defect is there. These are the kind of cases that are referred to me for fixing because the normal dentist couldn't get in there or whether they got in there and couldn't do it uh, completely. So 
this is a cross section of the tooth that is the shape the middle tooth near the crosshair is the shape of the tooth it's not a normal shape at all so you see the black spots four black spots on it they are the actual canals inside the tooth so an average dentist without this imaging cannot see all of them in time or when you drill through the tooth you have to cut away a lot to see it but using this technology i can measure the spots where the canals are precisely and don't have to cut away too much of the tooth this is a case referred to me with a broken instrument inside the root so this is a normal x-ray that is a flat picture that means you have the width and the height so we know the broken instrument is on the front root of the tooth okay but when you do the slice you can see there is two canals so you now see where exactly the broken instrument is so we have to then make a decision can we go from the top or can we go from the side and get in there depends on the patient now if you look here on the top left there that is actually a stone inside the sinus of a patient a normal x-ray cannot see that so you can see there is an actual stone this patient has had pain in the jaw for like 6 7 months has gone to the doctors ent surgeons quite a number of medical professionals and they were giving just nasal sprays to make it better okay and then finally the patient came to our office we took the ct scan and that's what we found so we referred back to the ent surgeon and that stone is now taken out this is another one if you look at the size of the cavity inside the jaw bone and you see the level of the jaw bone is so thin so any further it will break through and this patient could have had a pathological fracture it could break the jaw and that is the filling that was done on that tooth you can see this second branch here a normal x-ray will not be able to find that branch and if you don't fill that there will be still bacteria there and this will continue growing so now this you know if you are a dentist you will see that this is not a normal tooth this is actually three teeth together one tooth here one tooth here one tooth here so three teeth were joined together when the patient came in so where will we decide how will we decide we are going to go into the tooth will we go here here or here so what happens is if you take a normal x-ray you will only see half of the actual problem so here we are when we take the scan you can see the difference there is this like a little crescent on the top this dark circle and the other view it looks like a full circle there and that is the other 3d reconstruction of that jaw that tooth looks very different to that so what we did was um, we sectioned off the tooth from the ct data remember the ct data the 3d printer or any other equipment cannot see the data that comes from the ct has to be converted into an stl or an obj file for the 3d printer to see so what we did here was we sectioned off it's like a virtual surgery and um, you digitally section off uh, the data and you just isolate the tooth first section is here cut off that section of the jaw so you can actually start seeing more detail then we peel away all the bone and now you can see that looks very different to a normal canal if you remember the previous slides you can see small white lines or dark lines coming from the top to the bottom so that are the normal levels of appearance but if you look at it it's actually in a very different format you see this connection here you see another connection there and you see this connection here okay so it is sectioned again to see where exactly the anatomy is this is where the nerve of the tooth is sitting it's like this cauliflower shaped uh, nerve so we have to clear out all this uh, area to get right down to the bottom here okay and now when you look at the shape of the tooth you have to decide which way to go if you go this way it can come out this way and cause a perforation it will come out to the root if you come this way then you cannot clean this way and this way okay if you come that way it is going that way and it will perforate there so how will we do it this is the 3d printed tooth 
that too, this is my first case, by the way. We have now done about 150 cases after this one. All of them have been successfully negotiated, and it has been a much more, uh, more detailed way of finding out a, what is the anatomy of the tooth. So you can literally do a practice uh, procedure before the patient comes to me. So the patient gets scanned, we section off the tooth that needs treated, or the surgical part, and then we print it. This is the actual dimension of that patient's tooth. You can see the little curve. If I go back slightly, you can see that curve has been accurately reproduced. This is as it came out from the printer, no post-processing. This is an FDM printer, by the way. So here it is a little bit more detail there. So you can see the section, you can see the anatomy inside, okay? So here we are. So a decision was made to go right in the middle of those two teeth. So it was angled that way and this way as well to clear out all the dead material. And if you look here, that is the filling. So you can see it actually branched into two in the middle, very far down. If we were using a conventional x-ray, we would have had to drill this way, this way and this way to see where exactly I need to go. That means I have to cut away quite a lot of this tooth. So here, only this small entry, which is angled this way, this way, and that way. So you could cover the whole anatomy. And that white line is the filling. So this patient had the follow-up just two weeks ago. The tooth is still there. Patient is happy. It was done using a special type of file like this because a normal um, root canal file is rigid. It cannot bend or deform or shape itself. If it bends beyond a certain level, for example, if I bend this, this will break. So this actually is like a mesh. As you can see here, each of it is micro mesh. This is a laser cut file. Again, SLS uh, laser uh, printed, that one. Okay, so what it does is as it goes down the canal, it compresses and expands at the same time. That is it, a bit more detail. You can see the fine mesh there. And as you can see the curve, it will follow the curve naturally of the root. So without damaging any further inside the tooth. Now, this is a different case altogether. This is a totally different case. This patient came to us two months ago uh, the lady was going to the United States um, for a very big presentation. It's an um, you know, important company executive. Came to us on Friday evening around 3 o'clock. We are ready to close. And in Ireland, nothing happens in the weekend. No labs, nothing works. Okay? And this patient is flying on Wednesday. And conventionally, if we try to do something, we have to take a mold of the teeth, then send it off to the lab. The lab has to do the uh, next stage. It takes three or four stages to make something like a prosthesis or a temporary anything to help her. So the way she presented was this, completely broken. So for a bridge that was here, from here to here, was broke. The patient came with this in the hand and say, what can we do here? And panicking because she's flying to the United States on Wednesday. This is Friday afternoon of around half three. So what will we do here? So what we did was we actually took a normal mold of the teeth. We temporarily fixed the bridge back to the mouth, took a mold, and using the cone beam scan that I mentioned, digitized the impression. This impression has been digitized. So this is actually the scan of the mold of the tooth. And then we inverted the impression using Autodesk um, Remake. Autodesk Remake uh, software used this to remake it. Uh, that's why we call it as a remake, because we made it into a positive impression of the uh, negative mold. This is a 3D scan of the other side of the jaw using an optical scanner. An optical scanner reconstructs the teeth in 3D. So what happens is we want the bite to match the other end, because if one side bite doesn't match, the patient cannot close the mouth. Okay, so it has to be absolutely accurate. So the optical scan, you can see the detail in the teeth. You can see the cracks and other things happening there in full HD color. And this actually, you know, this is only a screenshot, but the actual model 
can be rotated in the screen and see inside and outside at the same time. The normal way is not possible. So that was emailed to the lab. The lab 3D printed um, the models on Monday morning. They made an emergency denture Monday afternoon, couriered it to me Monday overnight. I got it on Tuesday and we fitted it. Took the broken route out, that was the bridge, and here is the emergency denture. Okay? So 3D printing nowadays can do more than just making toys and different things. You can do all kinds of things with 3D printing. The way we use it in our practice is not just for surgery. We use it for patient education as well. Uh, we do implants in our dental practice. In many cases, we have to open up the jaw, split the jaw into two to put implants in because the bone is very thin. So however good I am, however good the 3D scan is, it is still a screen. But if you can actually 3D print the jaw, hold it in your hand and do a practice surgery on that 3D printed jaw, the accuracy and the feel of my hand improves. So by the time the patient comes to me for surgery, I have already done it. So that actually means the time that is taken to keep the mouth open, the time that is taken to split the jaw, everything comes down, which is good for the patient. The less surgical time, the better, because you are literally splitting the jaw into two to put a metal screws inside. So if you reduce the amount of cutting that you need, that is kinder to the patient, okay? And one other thing is, uh, recently again, another patient who came who had arthritis, he cannot hold his hand completely to use a brush, okay? So if you cannot use a brush, you cannot clean your mouth. So he's an elderly patient and he was a school teacher, so very meticulous, so he's unhappy. So what can he do? So we had no solution at the time. We had a bit of a think. What we did was we took some silicone putty, molded it into a ball and asked him to hold it in his hand at his comfortable level, okay? Once it's set, that was taken and put it into the um, cone beam scanner and it was digitized. Using the mesh mixer, again, Autodesk mesh mixer, we made a small hole in the um, um, 3D model and used it as a brush holder. So he had a full um, comfortable hold, brush was inside and much easier to brush. That's another thing, okay? So that's about it, essentially. We are in the age of Star Wars. You know, we have this um, stormtroopers, all the armor has been printed by ABS, uh, hand polished, colored and everything. This is actually pride of place in Changi Airport in Singapore. Okay, uh, that's it. Yep.